every time a new version of pigments comes out, I wonder what can they possibly have added that wasn't already there. And yet, they surprised me again. Pigment 6 is out now, let's see what's new in it. Number one, there's a new engine. Pigments is probably already the most complete soft synth on the market, and now we get a brand new model engine, which uses a very clever implementation of physical modeling. Let's have a look. Physical modeling synthesis is typically based on the properties of a resonator, and Pigments offers two types of resonators. So we have string and beam. If this is intimidating at first, you can start with the play view. I really like this simplified view just to play around. Uh, you get brilliance. And this controls the higher harmonics. Warp moves the whole group of harmonics up or down. Clearer if brilliance is up and volume is hopefully uh, self-explanatory. But let's go back to the synth tab. As usual with Arturia, they did a great job at providing explainers in the info bar down here. So I'll just have a play trying to make some cool sounds from this engine, let's see. Pretty cool, this is entirely from the model engine, there are no effects, but also all the sound shaping, I didn't even tweak the amp envelope, it's all coming from the uh, model engine, which is pretty cool. As with anything using physical modeling, MPE works great, let's play some of these with Osmos. Number two, the filter section has been revamped and there are some new additions. Filters have now been organized between digital and analog and most of the digital filters also have a digital to analog switch that changes the response of the resonance. You also get all pass filters which allow you to do some interesting phase shifting stuff. And there is also this new uh, filter drive control, which, by the way, can work polyphonically as most stuff on pigment. So this is quite cool if you use it with, for example, polyphonic aftertouch. Let's assign this to polyphonic aftertouch and try it with Osmos. <laughs> I really like this new layout, it's much cleaner to look at and should make finding the right filter much easier. As I mentioned earlier, there are also a few new additions. If you go in the cluster category, you'll find some models that were already in what was called a multi-mode in a Pigments 5, but some others are brand new and actually really, really cool. It works by combining filter types together and adding multiple cutoff points. So for example, we can try this low pass plus high pass together. You 
have this lo-fi filter and this allows you to change the sample resolution of the filter. <laughs> You're probably guessing that it works a bit like a beat crusher, and it absolutely does, but the end result is considerably different from the beat crusher that you find in the distortion section of the effects. I actually love modulating this. I think it's a great way to add movement to a pad or to some ambient keys. Let's try assigning a quick LFO to the frequency. <laughs> get this interesting movement here you can you can hear the beat reduction slowly fading in it's kind of an interesting touch number three we now have a vocoder in the effect section now that's exciting let's have a play Let's modulate this format with an LFO. And I'm using Engine 1, which is a wavetable. Really quite cool. And here you have all the controls you typically find in a vocoder, and it does support external audio, which is cool. So if you're in a digital audio workstation, of course, to support external audio, you're going to need to set it up as a sidechain. I have some quick drum loop that I made here. Okay, so we have these as a modulator. I'm gonna play pigments while the drum loop is going. And of course, I can also do this trick that I do all the time when using vocoders that you can actually mute the thing that you're using as a modulator, the drums in this case, and you're going to set this to pre-fader. And in this way, you can use the audio coming from the drums without actually hearing them. Number four, and here we get into the more nerdy, advanced stuff that I really love. There are two new random generators. I have always felt like the random section of the modulators in pigments always sort of spoke to us modular since <laughs> Addict, and this update greatly expands on that. Uh, first thing they added is a new generator, which is simply called random. There were already lots of ways to get random values in Pigments 5, for example, with the Turing machine or with the sample and all, but this one is a way more immediate way to get stepped or smooth random values via this smooth control over here, which you can, of course, modulate and get this sort of like ever-evolving modulation, which is really cool to create like pads and atmospheric soundscapes. There are some really clever controls here. Again, if you come from the modular world, you'll be right at home. Let's try this quickly. Let's set the random one to random it's already set and let's assign this for example to this cutoff let's get rid of the envelope but we can do something like this Luca is changing the cutoff and then I can go from smooth to very stepped And the distance is also interesting because it changes how wide the modulator is from the center point. 
And second, there is this voice modulator here. And while I need this sort of a nod to the way classic analog hardware synths create voice spreads, I really like this. I really love it. And I think it's quite unique, at least uh, for a soft synth. So let's try this with pan, for example. So here we have a little keys patch with no panning. And let's modulate with the voice modulator this pan knob over here right after uh, filter number one. I'm gonna make it very wide. And now every time I trigger a voice, it will spread it in the stereo field. And obviously it works polyphonically for chords too. Very cool, I love this. Number five, this one's kind of hidden, but very powerful. There's a new combinate type. If you use these combinate modulators, and you absolutely should because they are really, really cool, you'll find a new envelope follower in the types list. The thing that I really love about this one is that with this source here, you can actually grab the audio that is going to be used as a source for the envelope follower at different spots in the audio signal. So by default, you have it on engine one, and you see that I basically have the envelope follower of whatever is coming out from engine one. But you can do, for example, things like setting it on engine two, which here is a sampler with granular capabilities, right? So this is engine two on sample mode with the granular mode activated. And you can do things like set the filter over here to be opened depending on the grain generation. So I have here the combinate one assigned to the filter cutoff. I'm going to open it wide. And now every time that a grain is generated in engine two, is going to open the filter. So if, for example, I raise the density, I'm going to have something like this. And in this way, the density also controls the filter, which is kind of very interesting. And you can also use scan in an interesting way. By the way, scan is another new thing on Pigment 6 for the granular engine. There is so much stuff to cover that we need a three hours video. But scan is this really cool thing that essentially defines the speed uh, at which the start position moves right away the minute you press a key. So look how it affects the filter over here. Very cool. Number six, we get a new AI-assisted preset matching feature. I put this last because it's honestly the thing that I was the least excited about, but after trying it, it works, and it works pretty well. Here's what it does. So next to the preset name, you'll get this little note icon, and it suggests you similar presets. So we're going to try this with my preset from Arturia Ambient Explorations. It's called Black Phone. It sounds like this. <laughs> And now it suggested a bunch of different presets. So let's try some of them. For example, Fallen Angel. Or Enter the Void. And they're kind of in the same realm. They're still this sort of like dark cinematic uh, type of sounds. It's really cool. And it also works on user presets if you analyze them. It's pretty clever and I also want to say refreshing in a time where AI seems to be used more as a way to replace human creativity rather than to help the creative process. I really hope this was useful. I really just focused on the new features, but there are a lot of improvements across the board from little workflow things to new samples to a ton of new wavetables, 100 new presets, GUI tweaks. If you've watched this channel before, you know I'm a huge fan of pigments. It's my go-to synth for most stuff. This makes it even more definitive. I think that's a good word to describe this update. If you're interested in more synth programming, make sure you subscribe and if you like Arturia synth I think one of their best classic synths is the Syntex emulation that released a few months ago I covered it in this video you can have a look at if you want thank you so much for watching as always and I'll see you next time